how many hours a day you waste or how many hours a week you waste. And the classic answer is something like four to six hours a day. You know, inefficient studying, uh, watching things on YouTube that not only do you not want to watch, that you don't even care about, that make you feel horrible about watching after you're done. And so if your life isn't everything it could be, you could ask yourself, well, what would happen if you just stop wasting the opportunities that are in front of you? I should lose weight. I should work out. I should work harder, and then you know what? People will do the shoulds, and they get mad at themselves. And suddenly, the thing you said should happen has to happen. That's when human beings change. Let's make it happen right now. Me and you, let's make it happen right now. Me and you, because you're smart enough. Progress has been made, but you got to keep on working. It's like God. You can't find it the illusion that you've made it. No, let me tell you something. you got to keep on working. And we're going to make it happen, my man. Hey sister, we're gonna make it happen, but you gotta get out your comfort zone. Because the next time you get an opportunity, you gotta be ready. Because we're turning dreams into reality. Just start working at it just a little bit, but do find out what your work is and hold on to it and don't let your dream go. Don't let it go. Unless you've made some major mistakes in life, you haven't started living yet. So a lot of people, if you've never made any major blunders, made some major mistakes, lost some serious money, taken some serious risks, you haven't started living yet. Going through life quietly, tiptoeing safely to an early grade? No, 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 no. You gotta take some chances. You wanna bring some adventure to your life. This is the time to stop and decide what direction you wanna go in. One of the best things you can do in your life is to change. Maybe on the page of this story right now, you see nothing but failure. When we read your story, what do you want us to see? That you was another failure? What do you want us to read when we read your story that you quit? What do you want us to read when we read your story that you gave up? That you threw in the towel? But here is what we're going to do. We're getting ready to turn the page. Because when you turn the page, you get ready to write a new story. Now is the time where you're going to begin to open up your mouth and declare that I'm going to build a legacy. Waste no more time arguing what a good man will be. Instead, be one and be the last legacy should not be measured in material wealth, but rather in the strength of character and faith that you pass on. I genuinely am a force of the world. You may not understand that yet, but you will eventually. And I genuinely believe I'm acting under the instruction of God to do good things. I want to make the world a better place. I genuinely believe my legacy is a good legacy. And I believe that eventually, when the legacy media catches up, they're going to understand I'm a good positive. I think a man should have absolutely no interest in whether he's actually happy. If I wake up and I'm unhappy, I will do the exact same things as if I am happy. I will go to the gym the same. I will work the same. How I feel has no impact on how I live my life. I don't think happiness as an index is a healthy view for a man to have on life success. If you're waking up and going, oh, am I happy, am I not? You're looking at life wrong. I think of a man, if you put happiness far, if you move it down the scale, right? And you start looking at, am I, am I successful? Am I competent? You know, am I achieving things? Am I, am I, am I respected? If you start to look at these indicators of your life, you're gonna end up being happier without actually analyzing if you're happy or not. But we talk about weak men. This is what's scariest about this entire agenda they're trying to support. Because their ideas, like the feminist idea and like the mainstream idea and like Logan Paul's ideas, all their ideals is if we weaken men, then if they become weak enough, they'll no longer be a threat. And I argue that point absolutely. I think the most dangerous men on earth are the weak men. I think inside of every single man, we're born with a fire inside of us that we do not control can destroy ourselves and other people. And if you look at men who have no emotional control, because that's what they're trying to teach us to have. They're saying, listen, you're a man, you're allowed to just cry all the time and have no emotional control, no stoicism, just be, react to your emotions. Do you know what happens when you tell men to just react to their emotions? Anger. You have school shootings, you have rape, 
You have violence. That's what happens when you tell men to have no emotional control. These school shooters are kids with no emotional control. Rapists are men with no emotional control. Violence and the bullshit you see on the street are men with no emotional control. Telling men to not be stoic is going to create a, a breed of violent young men who have no emotional control, can't control their emotions, and act out on them. That is absolutely not more dangerous to society than me coming along saying, listen, I don't give a f how you feel. It doesn't matter how you feel. Your duties and your responsibilities as an adult, you must comply and act a certain way regardless of how you feel. That is better for society as a whole, especially as I'm only teaching the tenants of, listen, go to the gym anyway. It doesn't matter. You don't feel like it. Go anyway. Listen, your girlfriend left you. Your heart's broken. You're not allowed to stop her. She doesn't want you. Get the f over it. What I'm saying is good for the world. They're saying, no, yeah. act out your emotions. Cool, you're creating stalkers, rapists, and school shooters. These people are f***ing dangerous. Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. Simplify your life. Don't waste the years struggling for things that are unimportant. Don't burden yourself with possessions. Keep your needs and want simple and enjoy what you have. Don't destroy your peace of mind by looking back, worrying about the past. Live in the present. Simplify. Our life is what our thoughts make it. Do every act of your life as if it were your last. In a word, your life is short. You must make the most of the present with the aid of reason and justice, since it is possible that you may be quitting life in this very moment, govern every act and thought accordingly. Adapt yourself to the life you have been given and truly love the people with whom destiny has surrounded you. If you accomplish something good with hard work, the labor passes quickly, but the good endures. If you do something shameful in pursuit of pleasure, the pleasure passes quickly, but the shame endures. A musician must make music, an artist must paint, a poet must write, if he is to be ultimately at peace with what a man can be, he must be. I will keep constant watch over myself, and most usefully, will put each day up for review. For this is what makes us evil, that none of us looks back upon our own lives. We reflect upon only that which we are about to do, and yet our plans for the future descend from the past. Excellence is never an accident. It is always the result of high intention, sincere effort, and intelligent execution. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives. Choice, not chance, determines your destiny. All human beings seek the happy life, but many confuse the means. For example, wealth and status. With that life itself, this misguided focus on the means to a good life makes people get further from the happy life. The really worthwhile things are the virtuous activities that make up the happy life, not the external means that may seem to produce it. Mark how fleeting and paltry is the estate of man. Yesterday in embryo, tomorrow a mummy or ashes. So for the hair's breadth of time, a sign for the life rationally and part with life cheerfully, as drops the ripe olive extolling the seeds of the boy and the tree that matures. Spend your brief moment according to nature's law and serenely greet the journey's end as an olive falls and it is ripe, blessing the branch that bear it and giving thanks for the tree that gave it life.